This is a demonstration of proof by induction. We're going to prove the theorem that the summation from i equal to 0 to n of i squared is equal to n times the quantity n plus 1 times the quantity 2n plus 1 divided by 6 for integer values of n greater than or equal to 0. When we do a proof by induction, it is important to be very clear about what the statement is depending upon n. In this case, we will declare our predicate p of n to be that the summation from i equal to 0 to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Now, an inductive proof must begin with a base case, and we see that we're trying to prove this for integer values of n greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, the base case should be n equal to 0. To prove p of 0, we look at the left-hand side, we see it's the sum from i equal to 0 to 0 of i squared, which is of course just 0 squared, which is 0. And the right-hand side is going to be 0 times 0 plus 1 times 2 times 0 plus 1 divided by 6. And of course this product is simply 0 as well. So we do get base case holding. Now the inductive step. We are allowed in induction proof to assume that the predicate holds for a particular value of n, and then we want to show that it holds for n plus 1. First we look at the summation on the left hand side. We're trying to show that the summation from 0 to n plus 1 is equal to the right hand side where n is replaced by n plus 1. So first just staring at the summation we have i equal to 0 to n plus 1 but what we do is strip off the last term, the n plus first term of this, and then we will have a summation from 0 to n plus simply the last term. This is a common thing to do in proofs by induction that involve summations or products. You strip off the last term. This allows us to substitute for the summation portion this easy to use right hand side right here and then perhaps all that is necessary is some algebra so let's do that using the inductive assumption we will replace the summation by the expression now we've got this entire expression and we're going to try to work with it and our target is to make it look like the right hand side here except that n is replaced by n plus 1 in these three occurrences. So let's do that. First we will put things over the common denominator 6. Second we will pull out the common factor n plus 1. Now we've got this expression right here. Let's list that as a quadratic expression right here and then let's factor that. Now when we factor it we see that we've got the n plus 1 good that's what we want we have n plus 2 but we can think of that as n plus 1 plus 1 and that's good and then we've got 2n plus 3 and what we'd like is for 2n plus 3 to be 2 times the quantity n plus 1 plus 1 and of course it is that, and that completes the proof. We have shown that if we assume that p of n holds, that p of n plus 1 must follow.